Good morning and welcome to Awaken Life Church. Winter is over and we've entered into spring. Flowers, plants and nature in general go through a season of darkness and death during winter. But then as spring arrives, nature is filled with signs of life. And spring is God's way of speaking to us and saying, through me, you will live again. In Psalm 30 verse 5b, we read, Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. We do pass through winter seasons of darkness and difficulty, but the joy of the Lord fills our hearts in the knowing that those times do not last forever. One day, at the appointed time, the difficulties will end and we will celebrate just like nature celebrates when spring arrives. So do not fear the nights, but live expectant of the morning to come. So trust in the Lord that the winter in your life will come to an end so that you can enjoy life that comes with spring. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you with joy in our hearts and gratitude, knowing that the difficulties in the winters in our lives will come to an end, that they don't last forever. Because you are with us and with faith and hope in our hearts, we will overcome And life will come back to us. Spring will show again in our realities and in our surroundings. So Lord, today I thank you that you are with us. And that as we spend time in your presence today, that you will reassure us of that certainty in our lives. That joy will come back, that joy will come in the morning and we will rejoice with the life that you have given us. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Enjoy the service and be blessed.
Father, I pray that that is our heart's cry this morning, that we are singing Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Father, I pray that our worship will not end when the singing part of a service is over. But I pray, Lord, that we are continuously singing your praises and worshiping you every day of the week, every minute of our lives, Lord. I pray that we'll understand that worshiping you is a lifestyle. It comes from the heart. And so, Father, I pray that we will worship you in spirit and in truth and that those words will ring true to each and every one of us that we will never stop singing. The music may stop, but our hearts will never stop singing. Father, I pray that we'll continue to see your goodness in our lives. I pray that we'll continue to see the big and the small ways that you are moving in our lives, the ways that you are working for us. Father, I pray that we'll continue to come before you with our requests, that we'll come before you with our thanksgiving. I pray that we won't only come to you when we need something, but that we are going to come to you every day, thanking you for your work in our lives, for your love. So Lord, as we sing to you, as we honour you, I pray, I pray that our hearts will just be seeking more of you, a closer relationship with you, a closer encounter with you. And I pray that we'll never get tired of walking with you, of seeking more of you and spending time in your presence. So may we just enjoy this time soaking in your presence and feeling your love surround us. That we can feel worthy and special because you love us. You created us with a greater purpose. So may we live our lives with that knowledge, with that confidence. Father, I pray that our hearts will receive your word this morning, that your word will fall on good soil, that we will accept what you have to say to us this morning and that we will act upon it, that we will apply it to our lives. We just give you all honour and praise, Lord. Amen. Good morning, church. It's good to be together again. It's a new season, spring, a time of new beginnings, new hope, new life. It's a wonderful day here in Pretoria, and I hope it's a wonderful day where you are. And of course, we are open now for in-person meetings. So I hope to see you with us. It's a new season. And we are starting a new series today, which I hope will be exciting and a blessing to you. Yes, it's Stranger Stories. Granted, just about every story in the Bible is strange, isn't it? But there are some which are stranger than others. We are familiar with some of these Bible stories, like David and Goliath, Noah and the Ark, Jesus walking on water. These are popular stories which are often used in sermons or in Sunday school class. But the Bible is peppered with other stories, some of them very short, which are not so popular or familiar, but which also contain lessons about God, about life, and about spiritual realities. In this series, we will take a look at some of these stories. Not all of them, because there are many, 
And so we'll leave some stories for maybe another series of this kind. You may never have heard some of these stranger stories that we will share in this series. Or maybe you did hear them or read them in passing, but never stopped to consider what messages these stories are conveying to us. The Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16 that all scripture, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And so both the known and the unknown, the lesser known stories of the Bible are useful to us. They are part of the whole counsel of God. Today, we begin with a story fit for a fairy tale, <laughs> except it is not a fairy tale. It is the story of the talking donkey. What would you do when you know what the will of the Lord is, but someone offers to reward you greatly if you go against the Lord's will? Huh? If you had a spiritual gift, an ability that God wanted to use for a specific purpose, would you disobey the Lord if someone offered you to reward you with money, power, or popularity? <laughs> if you were going down the wrong path, what would it take to bring you back to your senses? <laughs> In our story today, we get to meet a gifted man who knew the will of the Lord, yet he tried to go around it for personal gain, only to be confronted with the judgment of the Lord. This man lived in the time of Moses. He was not an Israelite, but somehow he had knowledge of the true almighty God and was known for his spiritual gifts. Whatever he blessed would be blessed. And whatever he cursed would be cursed. His name was Balaam. As the Israelites approached Jericho, after 40 years wandering in the desert, they camped on the plains of Moab, on the side of the Jordan River across from Jericho. Now, Balak, the king of Moab, had heard of the Israelites and their victories over their enemies. When he saw them camping nearby, he became very scared. He knew what their source of power was. He knew their source of power was a spiritual one. So he called on Balaam to come and curse the Israelites. At first, Balaam refused because God told him, not to curse the Israelites because they were blessed. But King Balak insisted and he promised to reward Balaam greatly if he would come. And so, although Balaam knew it was not God's will for him to curse the Israelites, he came to King Balak anyway. He insisted. And this is what happened on his journey. Here is the stranger story for today. Numbers chapter 22, verses 21 to 35. So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now, the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back onto the road. The angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards, with a wall on the side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot 
against the wall. So he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she just lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger was aroused and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and she said to Balaam, what have I done to you? that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you have abused me, I wish there were a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? And he said, no. And then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And so he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now, therefore, if it displeases you, I I will turn back. And then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Hmm? (laughs) What a story. Isn't it strange? And and I don't know what is stranger of you, the donkey, talking to Balaam, or Balaam talking back to the donkey and having this conversation. Listen, if you were going down the wrong path, what would it take to bring you back to your senses? It took a talking donkey to stop Balaam and bring him back to his senses. In fact, the apostle Peter said this about this man. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. Balaam was rebuked for his iniquity. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of the prophet. (laughs) He calls what Balaam did madness. He was a prophet. He had heard from God and yet he went against it. That's madness. It is madness to go against the revealed will of the Lord. Sooner or later, our stubbornness will catch up with us and the judgment of the Lord will come upon us. In this episode, if the donkey had not stopped but moved ahead towards the angel, there would have been no Balaam to talk about because he would have been killed. Although, The stranger story here is the talking donkey. The main character in the story is Balaam. And unfortunately, there is nothing strange about Balaam. There are still many Balaams around today. Maybe you and I have at times behaved like Balaam. Our story today is to warn us against the attitude and the sin of Balaam. Just because the Lord used a donkey once to speak to a man and stop his madness does not mean he will do it repeatedly. As far as we know, this is the only occasion in history when this happened. It was recorded for our instruction, our correction, and our warning. So here is what we know about Balaam. 
we know that he knew the true God and was known as a prophet of God. Somehow, like some other men of old, like Melchizedek, Jethro, Job, and others, the knowledge of the one true God was not limited to the descendants of Abraham. In the olden days, as it is today, those who seek God will find him, for he is not far from those who seek him. These men received instruction, knowledge, and wisdom from the Lord. But having a revelation of God does not guarantee that one will follow God. In Balaam's case, he was more interested in financial gain, in keeping his reputation, in pleasing and being popular with King Balak and other kings of surrounding areas. Here's something else you know about him. He tried to use his gift for personal gain. His intention was to please Balak and gain, gain favors from him. Even when God told him not to curse Israel, man, he kept trying. Three times he had sacrifices offered and tried to get God to let him curse Israel. God would not allow Balaam to curse Israel, but he kept trying anyway. Let this be a warning to us. The Bible says that God's gifts are given to us without repentance. That means that when God gives you a spiritual or natural gift or a leadership gift, He will not necessarily remove it from you if you misuse it for your own gain. Unfortunately, we see today when many so-called men of God seem so anointed, and then you find out they committed fraud, immoralities, and other sins for their own gain. They bring disrepute to the work of the Lord and to the positions they occupy, bringing shame to the Lord's name and to the Lord's cause. This is nothing new. It happened in the Old Testament days and happens today as prophesied by Jesus. Remember what Jesus said, Luke 17, 1, Jesus said, it is impossible that no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. Hmm. The word offenses is the Greek word scandalon, which means a trap stick, a snare, a thing that offends, a scandal, a stumbling block. So Jesus says that it is impossible that scandals would not happen. It happened in the days of old. It happened in the days of Jesus. And it still happens today. And it will happen until Jesus returns. But here is the warning. Jesus said, woe, that's a heavy word, woe to him or her through whom they come. If there is no repentance, then judgment will come to them, just like it came to Balaam. When Balaam could not curse the people of Israel, he used his knowledge and insight to instruct King Balak on what to do to get the Israelites to sin and to fall. He instructed Balak to use his people to entice the Israelites into idolatry and prostitution. And this they did, as we read in Numbers chapter 25. Because of sexual immorality with Moabite women and idolatry among the Israelites as they were invited to sacrifice to the Moabite gods, a plague, a pestilence came upon the Israelites and caused many to die until judgment came upon them and they repented. We read in Numbers chapter 31 verses 16, that Moses said, Look, these women from Moab caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to trespass against the Lord in their incident of Pi, And there was a plague among the congregation 
of the Lord. In the book of Revelation, as the Lord speaks to the church in Pergamum, one of the churches in Asia, we read of Balaam's influence over Israel. Revelation chapter 2, verse 14, it says, But I have a few things against you, because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Balaam was dead, but his influence was still active thousands of years later in the church. The doctrine of Balaam, the teachings, the deceit of Balaam still prevailed and had infiltrated a Christian church. <laughs> Unfortunately, 2,000 years after the letter to Pergamum, the doctrine of Balaam continues to try to infiltrate the lives of Christians and of Christian churches today. Sexual immorality is still a problem today. Idolatry, in other words, the putting someone or something else before Jesus continues to be a problem today. What else do we know about Balaam? Balaam was judged. In spite of the Lord speaking and revealing his will for him, Balaam pushed ahead in disobedience. After meeting the angel, he was taken to mountain tops and he tried to get God, God's permission to curse Israel. And when that didn't work, he instructed the king. In other words, he continued to push in disobedience. In spite of a donkey trying to stop his madness, he continued pushing ahead in disobedience. Even when the Lord prevented him from cursing the Israelites, Balaam instructed the king Balak on how to cause the people of God to sin and bring a curse and a plague upon themselves. Due to his continued disobedience, Balaam was judged. And it's interesting that he gave some prophecies of Israel. And one of the prophecies he gave was that Israel would destroy their enemies, the surrounding nations. Not long after that, in battle, the Israelites slayed the kings of the surrounding nations. And they also killed Balaam. He paid with his life for his continued stubbornness and his obedience to God. Numbers 31 verse 8. They, the Israelites, killed the kings of Midian with the rest of those who were killed. Evi, Rechem, Zur, Hur, and Reba, the five kings of Midian. Balaam, the son of Beor, they also killed with the sword. So judgment came to him. Hmm. There are some lessons for us. Let's look at a few lessons from this account. A gift or calling from God does not make you immune to sin. Take note of that. You remain a human being susceptible to fail. If you are standing, beware lest you fall, is the warning the Bible gives us. Those called of God should be above reproach, should be honored and followed, but also should be accountable and approachable. The stronger your gift and popularity, the greater the temptation. <laughs> Therefore, be aware of the three Ps, pride, pennies, and petticoats, or pants if you are a woman. Many Christians today follow leaders blindly, never questioning them. They believe that the man of God or the woman of God cannot be questioned. They quote David's account of the journeys of God's people in the Old Testament, the Israelites. This is what David said, Psalms 105, verses 13 to 15. They, the Israelites, they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people. He, God, permitted no one to do them wrong. Yes, he rebuked kings for their sakes, saying, do not touch my anointed ones and do my prophets 
no harm. Who were the anointed ones? It, it were his people, the Israelites. Today, some preachers will quote this passage to isolate themselves from criticism. They promote themselves and their ministries as anointed and warn critics not to touch them. <laughs> this way, they can be isolated from scrutiny and spread false teachings and bad theology without restraint. However, today, the church, every believer is God's people. We are all the anointed ones. <laughs> Back in Balaam's day, the Holy Spirit had not been poured upon everyone, and so they could easily be deceived. But today, the Holy Spirit has been given to all believers. We have the Holy Spirit in us, and we should listen to Him as He helps us discern what is being taught or prophesied. Don't just believe anything someone tells us in the name of the Lord. We have the Bible, so check with Scripture. We have the Holy Spirit, so learn to listen to Him. The Holy Spirit will not contradict the written Word. And so, we have to be aware not to fall into sin. And we have to be aware not to be deceived by the influence of false prophets and ministers. Here's another lesson. There is such a thing as a spiritual dimension. Demons and angels exist around us, even though we cannot see them. Blessings and curses do affect us and the people around us. What we say matters, and the words we allow to land in our hearts matter too. Therefore, we need to guard our hearts and minds. I shared with you recently that there is a God and there is a devil. There are angels and there are demons. And that's it. Nothing else. Your ancestors are not around. The spirits of the departed are not around. They are either with the Lord or they are not, depending on their lives, on their choices and beliefs while they were on earth. God reveals Himself in many ways to mankind. Every human being has eternity in their hearts. The Spirit of the Lord seeks every human. And those who seek the Lord and respond to His call will find Him. Those who resist, reject, or ignore will receive the fruit of their choice, as God will honor their desire to be far from him. In our story today, the donkey saw the angel before Balaam did. Listen, learn to be aware of spiritual activity around you. Remember, we do not fight against flesh and blood. We do not fight against people, but against spiritual forces of evil who affect and influence those who are not aware and prepared to resist them, causing them to carry out the evil wishes of the devil. Just like those who are aware of the Spirit of God and the Word of God will be influenced to carry out the will of the Lord on the earth. Seek first the kingdom, the government, the influence of God in your lives so that the will of the Lord may be done on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. And then one last lesson of here is this, that God's will and God's word will prevail. All right. No matter what, God's will, God's word will prevail. Even if God has to use a donkey to speak and stop the madness, His will will prevail. And if God can use an unlikely instrument like a donkey to speak and alert a man of God's judgment, then maybe He can use an unlikely instrument like you and I to alert someone to God's judgment which will come upon all mankind. 
He can use us to tell someone that Jesus has already been judged and executed on our behalf, that he rose from the dead and is alive today, willing to welcome us into his Father's kingdom, and that if we will believe the gospel of Jesus, we will be saved. We will not be judged, but live forever in his presence. God has used many ways in the past to communicate his will and his message. And then Jesus came. He brought the message of the gospel. He opened the way to the Father. When he ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit was given to us. And so today, God does not exercise dramatic judgments like he did in the Old Testament. We live in the period of grace where the message is being spread by the weakness of human vessels. Angels and, and talking donkeys would probably make a greater impression on people if they were the preachers, huh? People today still love the spectacular and dramatic, but God is not into that. God is into obedience. His truth is being proclaimed. He loves us but will not force us to love him back. Today, he just invites us through the foolishness of the preaching of the gospel to follow him, trust him, and obey him. So, don't try to bypass God's revealed will like Balaam did. Don't create stumbling blocks and problems for others like Balaam did when he instructed King Balak on how to cause Israel to fail. Don't be a cause of scandals by your behavior, attitude, or deceit. Don't allow the things of this world to influence you to disobey the word and the will of God like Balaam did. Balaam was quickly judged and killed. Today, God does not usually deal like that with those who disobey Him. Those people today who disobey Him may live a long life on earth, but one day we will all have to stand before God and give an account. No one will escape that day. And if they have not repented and accepted the salvation that Jesus offers, they will have condemned themselves before God. If you have not repented yet, you are condemning yourself before God. No, a donkey will not come and cause us to stop our madness today. But may the story of this donkey who lived and spoke thousands of years ago, cause us to pause, cause us to ponder and stop our madness as we turn and surrender every day of our lives to Jesus. Amen. Let's close in prayer. Yes, Lord. A strange story. And yet, after all these thousands of years, it still speaks to us today. Help us to learn from this stranger story, my God. To not tempt you. To not try to bypass your will anyway, Lord. Help us to stay humble before your presence. To allow you to use us the way you want to use us, Father. Never to take the gifts, the blessings, the talents you've given us and use them for our own personal gain or to manipulate others or to seek our own will through the gifts you've given us. I pray for your people, Father, everyone listening, everyone watching. Cause us and help us, Father God, to be obedient to your will, nothing more, nothing less. And we thank you for your strength day by day, the guidance of your Holy Spirit as we endeavor to do this. We thank you, Lord. 
in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful week. Remember the donkey, Balaam, and live this week doing what you can, your best, to do the will of the Lord. Next week we'll be here with another stranger story. And we'll be hoping to see you in our in-person services as well. Have a great week. The Lord bless you. Amen.